at them. And now you can imagine how much that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took purity in the Quran to talk about those people, to describe them. And what is the benefit of multiple verses, one after one, one after one, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us almost a full description about those people, about the criteria, how to be one of those. And one of the things that we mentioned before that it might be two or three of these characteristics could be, inshallah, enough for you. Because we, we cannot have, or like we do not want, or like uh, we, we do not ask you to have, that you must have all of them. Yes, of course, if you got them, that would be beautiful. But what about if you got two or three of them? And, uh, and alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, we, we still have some of those that we wanted to cover, inshallah, before we end this surah. We are almost there uh, to, 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 to finish our journey with this surah and to move back to another surah, which is Surah Shu'ara, inshallah, Rabbil Alameen. But today's verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَالَّذِينَ إِذَا ذُكِّرُوا بِآيَاتِ رَبِّهِمْ لَمْ يَخِرُّوا عَلَيْهَا صُمَّا وَعُمْيَانَا وَالَّذِينَ إِذَا ذُكِّرُوا بِآيَاتِ رَبِّهِمْ لَمْ يَخِرُّوا عَلَيْهَا صُمَّا وَعُمْيَانَا And those, when they get the reminder, when they get the verses of Allah, they do not treat it blindly or being deaf. They are not blind and deaf with the verses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes, of course, that's the literal translation for the verse but it has a deeper meaning in its context. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about the verses of Allah, means the Quran, those who will listen to the Quran, those who will get the reminder from the Quran, they should not treat the Quran as they are blind or as they are deaf. And, and the main point here takes us to our perspective to the Quran, what we consider the Quran how we treat the Quran, the verses of Quran, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned that it is a way to increase our iman, it, is, it has the guidance, it has the teachings and the message of Allah, the last message of Allah to the humanity, to all the creation. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this verse saying, وَالَّذِينَ إِذَا ذُكِّرُوا And it came with the present simple tense, means, when they are in a constant state of being reminded, when they are usually reminded of the verses of Allah, they do not read it as that, that they do not see it. Means they got the proper implementation. They got the proper effect of the Quran on themselves. So now we can ask ourselves, how should we react with the verses of the Quran? How should we listen to the Quran? How should we treat the Quran? And let me tell you, the mainstream, the vast majority of people, when, they, when we talk about Quran, they treat Quran as the book of gaining hasanat or gaining barakah, gaining blessings from Allah, not the book of guidance that they wanted to apply in their daily life. The way that Muslims are, are treating Quran right now is completely different than the time of the Sahaba. Because the Sahaba treated the Quran in such a way that it's their guidance, it is their curriculum, it is their way of life. And that is how we should go back and treat the Quran. And the week that our Ummah is having right now because our perspective to the Quran, how we treat the Quran. And for instance, when you have a verse in the Quran, a surah in the Quran, and then the Imam is reciting, or somebody is mentioning this, this verse, and just if you, even if you know the meaning, sometimes we do not react properly, positively, with the verse of the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, if you wanted to be one of the servants of the most merciful, 
be considerate of what you have, what you are hearing in the Quran. Be considerate of the verses of the Quran, taking consideration that this is not a normal words. This is not your speech or a present speech or a, a philosopher's speech. No, this is the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the message that Allah had sent to the, the creation as their guidance. That is how we, we should look at the Quran. Allah said, Lam alayha, the believers didn't treat the Quran or they did not treat the Quran. Summan, summan means like that, that they, they do not hear it. <laughs> they do not see it. They are not blind. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in another verse in the Quran said, وَالَّذِينَ إِذَا ذُكِّرُوا Like, the, and, and those, when they got the remembrance of Allah, الَّذِينَ إِذَا ذُكِّرَ اللَّهِ وَجِلَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ When the reminder, when the remembrance of Allah is being made, their hearts are trembling, shivering. It moves. Why? Because of the power of the message of Allah. Now, if I wanted to ask you, it's a rough question. Can you mention a verse in the Quran that you lie the most? Means it moves you. Do you have special thing in the Quran that you can mention that moves your heart? Something in the Quran Whenever you mention your tears come down or a special surah transformed you, changed your life. What's your, yes, of course, we love the entire Quran from cover to cover, but sometimes you might have a verse that touches you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, one of the verses that it, it like, it, it changes my mood completely when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Do you think that I have created you for no purpose and you wouldn't come back to me? That, that, that's a verse in the Quran. And one of the verses also when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that you will come to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you, you, will, you will come to Allah alone as we have created you naked, have nothing. SubhanAllah. And, and those who are claiming that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had considered his son. And there is a powerful message in the Quran to them when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, like, how come they are claiming that Allah had a son. Allah said, تَكَادُ السَّمَاوَاتُ يَتَفَطَّرْنَ مِنْ وَتَنْشَقُّ الْأَرْضُ وَتَخِرُّ الْجِبَالُ هَدَّى the, the, the skies would crack because of their statements. The earth will have earthquake and the mountains will collapse because of their statements. And دَعَوْ لِلْرَّحْمَانِ وَلَدَى or they are Claiming that Allah had a son. It's not befitting with Allah to consider a son. Listen to this. Everyone, with no exception, on the heavens and the earth will stand before Allah as slain, as a servant. They will come to Allah with alone. No titles, no like stars, no certificates. They will come. They will come to Allah alone. Being alone in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And now, now you think about this. The believers, when they get the reminder, they react as they see 
as they hear. They are not deaf, they are not blind. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned that because one of the characteristics of the hypocrites that whenever they, they, they hear the Quran, what Allah mentioned in Surah Al-Baqarah, Summun, Bukmun, Aumirun, right? They, they do not hear, they do not talk, they, that means they do not react. They are completely blind. They, they cannot see the reality. That's why we have lots of people nowadays, no matter what they heard of Quran, the Quran has not affected their hearts. I told you because the hearts are wrapped up with the sin. It's, it's not shining. The hearts are not shining. It's dark. Imagine if you have a dark heart. So what do you think? Like Abu Lahab, how many times Abu Lahab had heard the Quran? Abu Jahl, how many times had heard the Quran? What about Sayyidina Umar? See, he said to his sister, hand me this, give me this, let me write, let me read it, let me see what is, what is inside that book. He said, you are not pure enough, go, you have impurity, go and, and watch yourself. And then he surrendered. I told you before, that was the main reason for, for Omar ibn Khattab to be guided. That's, the, that's the, the step forward that he took. He answered and he said, okay, let, let, me, let me go, let me go watch. Why? That's the first step forward that he made. So he deserved the, 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 he deserved the, the guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And once he made that watch and he hold the Quran, he started to read with Surah, with Surah Taha, right? He started to recite Surah Taha. مَا أَنزَلْنَا عَلَيْكَ الْقُرْآنَ لِتَشْقَى إِلَّا تَذْكِرَةً لِمَنْ يَقْشَى تَنْزِيلًا مِمَّا خَلَقَ الْأَرْضَ وَالسَّمَاوَاتِ الْأُولَى الرَّحْمَانُ عَلَى الْعَرْشِ اسْتَوَى he, 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 he recited the, the very first verses of Surah Taha and here, the guidance penetrated his heart. That's, a, that's the transformation. I told you before about the story of who? Malik ibn Dina, the great alim, the great scholar. He wasn't righteous. He wasn't scholar. He wasn't that you know, pious person, he was involved in the major, not even minor sins, no, major sins, major sins. And I do not want to spend the entire time telling you his story because we mentioned that before, but do you remember what he saw in his dream? That he saw his daughter, Fatima, the one he, that she passed away young and he's escaping from the, 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 the hill fire in the dream. And she, he found a hill in front of him and he wanted to climb that hill. And on the top of that hill, he found his daughter stretching her arm and wanted to, to save him from the, the hill fire. And she said, dad, and recited a Quran. Alam amanu. Isn't it the time yet for the hearts of the believers to go back to Allah? So what, how did he react when he woke up? He, he screamed. He shouted and he said, Ana ya Rab. Oh Allah, it is the time. And then he became the great scholar that we are taking the knowledge from. That's how he started. This is the case. To put Allah's words first, he, like even if it came against your dreams, desires, wishes, even like the commands of Allah should come first before anything else in your life. If Allah said that, I should follow. I, I, I have to follow. 
when I recite the Quran, like Subhanallah, Wallahi, our Ummah, if we wanted to go back to Allah and be strong again, all what we need to stick with the Quran. If we just applied one surah of the Quran, it will solve our problem. We have social problems, economic problems. We have lots of problems related to our unity, related to our adherence to the book of Allah and the sunnah of Rasulullah If we stick with the Quran, it will change it. We just need to change the mentality, the way that we hear the verses of the Quran. Sometimes we hear the Quran, we say, MashaAllah, we got today lots of hasanat. Let's recite Quran to get some barakah. And you know, some people, they, they uh, subhanAllah, they, they just play the Quran in their houses when somebody passing away. So they treat the Quran as the book for dead, for the deceased. But Allah, why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the Quran? Allah said so in Surah Yaseen, لِيُنْذِرَ لِيُنْذِرَ مَنْ كَانَ حَيَّةً That Quran came to guide, to warn those who are living, not for, the, for, for, for dead people. When we have the hadith of Rasulullah, if a man passed away, all his actions will come to an end, except the three things that he mentioned. But the Quran, the guidance is not for the deceased, it's not for, it's, it's not for those who passed away, but it's mainly for those who are seeking that guidance for the living. And, and that is why when you, when, you, when you see the Sahaba, how did they react when the, the verses of the Quran came with the prohibition of the wine, right? So what did they make? They spill it on the ground. They spill it on the ground immediately. They didn't say, oh, oh Imam, can you tell me which madhab are you following? You know, is that Hanafi school? No, 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 I, I do not think that it's Hanafi. Can you check the Shafi'i? Can you find an outlet in the Malikis? Can you, can you Imam see if the hadith that you are talking about is weak or not? You know, that's why lots of people, and, 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 and the weakness of the Imam started from here. The division, the division amongst the ummah. That's why our life do not call Muslim anything except as Muslim. As Muslim. That's it. Stop dividing the ummah. They made that schools of thought for the scholars, for the ulama to, to, to be able to consider the different rules of fiqh in terms of the fatawa not to be spreading amongst the ummah like this and need for more division. That's not the way. Like one of the things that we need to know about Quran that the more that we, we get from that ocean, the more that Allah will rectify our situation. The more that we get closer to the Quran, the more that we become good servants. Just think about this. Allah, this ayah, I feel its pain in my heart whenever I recite it. It's the only complaint in the Quran. The only complaint in the Quran from the Prophet Muhammad He didn't complain that his ummah will follow the lasters the desired, no. He didn't complain that his ummah will take lots of riba and usury. He did not complain that the ummah will listen to the music. No, he didn't, he didn't complain all, about all of them. He complained and, and he said, and that is in Surah Al-Furqan, this Surah. وَقَالَ الرَّسُولُ يَا رَبْ إِنَّ قَوْمِ اتَّخَذُوا هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ نَهْجُوهَا and the Messenger of Allah said, Oh my Lord, oh my Rabb, 
my people, my ummah, had deserted the Quran, had abandoned the Quran. Just think about our relationship with the Quran right now. Is it our curriculum? Is it our way of life? Is it our way of salvation? When we look at the Quran, the words of the Quran, like, let me let me tell you one of the good stories. And alhamdulillah, you know this, because mashallah, all of you, alhamdulillah, became scholars, mashallah. So one of the things that, do you, do you remember the story of Sayyidina Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, radiallahu when the man, one of his relatives had slandered Sayyidina Aisha? I, I will not ask you about the name of the person, okay? What's the name of the person? <laughs> okay, okay, no, let me remind you. So I said, I will not ask you, then I ask you. You see the trick? Okay. It's okay. The name of the person, Mustah ibn Athafa. Mustah ibn Athafa. That's his relative. He said the bad word about Sayyidah Aish. Again, one more time. Mustah ibn Athafah. Right. You see? That. Inshallah. So that person slandered Sida Aisha and he was giving him something like monthly spending on him, helping him. So he swore by Allah that after what he made, I would never ever give that man what I used to give. So that's khalas. He made an oath. He would never. So what the verses of Allah came when? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Allah to Hibbuna, what will I tell you in Fabulin Masakin, while Muhajirina fi Sabir in Lahi, while Yafu, while Yostahu, Allah to Hibbuna, Yahir Allah, Hulakum. Allah revealed the verses to blame Abu Bakr Siddiq, how to make an oath that you stop the charity that you are giving to somebody. You should continue and not stop. So how did he react? He said, I, I will continue. So he made a compensation for his oath and he continued giving mustah till he passed away, till Sayyidina Abu Bakr passed away and his family relatives continued on spending on mustah because of these verses. It's not just words. These are the verses of Allah can change your life, can transform you. Sometimes, <laughs> one of the subhanAllah, you know, one of the things that I remember somebody that happened like two, two, two years ago. I remember somebody gave somebody a, a, a sadaqah and that person, his children wanted to have like a video game machine or something, like PlayStation. After he gave him the sadaqa, he got the news from his relatives that that brother took his sadaqa and he got PlayStation for his children. You know what did he make? He said, Wallahi, I will never give him sadaqa again. <laughs> so why do you stop this? Why? He said, because he proved to me that he does not need it. You give sadaqa, right? You give sadaqa. Now it's his, it, now that is his money. Let him do whatever. No, if he wanted to prove that he deserves the sadaqa, he, he has to come to the masjid with clothes full of dust, full of dust to prove to me that he is fakir and deserves my sadaqa. Allahu Akbar, who are you? Take your sadaqa and sit home. Stay home. Take, we do not want your sadaqa anymore. If you think that with your sadaqa, you will humiliate people, Allah does not want your sadaqa. Sayyidina Abu Bakr, Siddiq radiallahu anh, continuing giving a person who accused his daughter of adultery. Not somebody got PlayStation. Why we need, we think that we want to be judgmentals. We want to hire ourselves like to govern people's life. 
You give sadaqa, that is for Allah. The main concern to your mind, the, the, the main thing that will keep you busy thinking of once you give the sadaqa, you ask yourself one question. Did Allah accept my sadaqa? That's it. Do not, do not think about what did he make with your sadaqa. You know, some people, when they give you a shirt or something, they will call you the next day, Imam. What do you think about the shirt that I gave you? Two days after, Imam, be aware. Do not put it in the washing machine with other colors. Imam, I saw you while you are driving with the shirt. It looks nice. You know, that's the case. Allah said, do not hurt people with your sadaqa. You give it for Allah. Give it for the sake of Allah, not for, for anyone. So I, I just brought this example to tell you how Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq reacted with the verses of Allah. So the believers should it be deaf, should it be blind when they see, when they hear the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do you remember the mothers of the believers, Ummahat al Mu'minin, the first generation of Sahabiyat, the great female companions? When they got the verses of hijab, Allah Akbar. Once the verses were revealed, the, the, the narration is amazing, Allah Akbar. So they said, once they heard the verse in Surah Al-Ahzab, يُدِنِينَ عَلَيْهِنَّ مِنْ جَلَابِي بِهِمْ ذَلِكَ أَدْنَا أَنْ يُعْرَفْنَ فَلَا يُؤْذَيْنَ When they got the verse of the hijab, it, now it's obligatory upon you. So the, 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 the narration came that they شَقَقْنَ مُرُوطَهُنَّ The extra flow in the jilbab, in the abaira, they cut it and they cover themselves immediately. Immediately while they are in the marketplace. No, Imam, I want to have time to go to the mall to get a fancy one. And I, I don't want to look those like those people who are wearing the hijab and they are like a black tint. I do not, I want to be modern. I want to represent the modern Islam. So how would that modern Islam in her in her mind? The modern Islam. That this hijab only for a, for a little bit of time when we come to the masjid. So what about outside the masjid? What about outside the masjid? Okay. And the new hijab nowadays that she puts the hijab and a little bit of the hair outside. Why? She, she, she might tell you because the imam who was talking to me with hijab, he didn't convince me completely, just 90% convincing. And that's why not the whole hair is covered. 10% is not convinced yet. So that's why it's out. Astaghfirullah. Is that the way how we, how we treat with the Quran? And lots of examples related to marriage relationships, the, like even divorce relationships. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, even if they decided to, be, to get divorced, that they have to get the morals, the manners, not to expose themselves on social media. He's sending a post, telling his secrets in the house, and she's telling him his secrets on Facebook, claiming that we are, you know, mu'mineen. It's not the way... That's not the way that we should read the Quran. Again, my message, whenever you hear, like how many, how many times Allah calling, Ya ayyuhalladina amanu. You know, Allah is calling whom? It's calling the believers. And you are you are saying, I'm a, I'm one of the believers. So once you hear, Ya ayyuhalladina amanu should pay attention. Allah is calling you. Yes, oh Allah, I'm here. You're calling me. Then you will hear the rest. Ya ayyuhalladina amanu. Yes, oh Allah. 
so and so, do so and so, stay away from so and so. Then you will react. Sami'na wa ata'na. We heard and we are going to obey, O oh Allah. That's how, that's what's the, like how many times per day you hear, Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu. You might have a person who's laying down on the couch and he's playing the Quran on the, the screen on YouTube next to him. And he's getting, the, why? To, to get the barakah iman. Barakah? To get the barakah? It, is, that is how Allah revealed the, that is, that is why Allah revealed the Quran? Just to hear, Ya ayyuhaladina amanu, while you are switching on the couch, raising your feet, and you look out, thinking of, you know, I'm enjoying the barakah without applying what is mentioned in the Quran. Do you think that Jibreel السلام, came like 24 years on the heart of the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth? And the Sahaba had collected the Quran and millions of hafiz for the Quran transformed the Quran to us generation after generation. For after this long journey. And the Quran has each to us say, Alhamdulillah. Do you think once it comes to you, Ya Ayyuhal Ladina Aman, I'm, I'm busy thinking of something else? Or you have people, they get a copy of Quran and they put it like in, in the car. If you've got an, a fancy copy of Quran in a, in a box, golden box and you want to keep it safe so you can read from it that's that's great you honor the book of allah but i see some people they put it in the car and they do not open it they do not read it they just keep it for what protection i don't want to get to, get to make an accident so i i kept copy of quran in the quran See, see how how we how we deal with the Quran. It's just for protection. And some some women get the necklace with uh, ayatul kursi. Why? For protection. I wanna. I don't want to get hasad. I do not want to get envy. That's not the Quran. The Quran should change our ummah. We should raise up our children on the verses of Quran. And, and the main reason for the whole series that we are talking about, the series that we are talking about, is to get the main theme of each surah so we could reflect upon the verses. We could have the glossary of the topics of Quran. Whenever you are in the midst of the darkness in your life and you want to search for the guidance, now you have the glossary. I want to read about this. Let's go to this surah. I want to read the, about this. Let's get about this. I, I have shortcomings. I want to. I want to repent to Allah. Which surah? Oh, this is the surah that Imam Ali told us about. I want to. I want to. I feel like I have shortage in my relationship with our with my relatives. I I have something wrong. I want to keep the ties of my kinship. Which surah? Yes, open this surah that Imam Ali told us about. That's the main purpose. It's not just a way, like it's not a it's not a waste of time. It is it is something that we need to think of. That this Quran is our way of life. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us to this meaning. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make this ummah strong again by going back to the Quran. جزاكم الله خيرا بارك الله لي ولكم في القرآن العظيم ونفع وإياكم بما فيه من آيات والذكر الحكيم وصل اللهم وسلم وبارك على على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين جزاكم الله خيرا بارك الله فيكم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته